Greetings, brothers and sisters. Hello and welcome back to Eva's House of Spirit. I'm Eva, and I have decided that at last I'm going to do the 77-question witchy community tag that has been going around. I know I'm probably a little late to the game, but things have been a little crazy around here, so <laughs> better late than never, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to do my tag my I'm gonna I'm gonna do the tag in segments another thing I will probably not get all the segments up in the same day but I'm sure you all won't mind what I'm gonna do is as I do each segment in the description of the videos that I'm gonna post I will have the questions listed that I answer in each segment so that when you do the tag if you haven't done it already if you wish to do this tag if you would prefer to do it in segments the way that I'm doing, you can just follow along and you can answer the same questions. I'm going to post them for you in the description. So you can just kind of like copy, paste, and then like do it that way. So with that said, um, let's get into the tag. The first question is, do you use runes as a written language? Normally, no, I don't. Um, have I used them to write things out, though? Have I ever used them as, you know, as a script? Yes, I have in the past a few times. But as a general rule, do I do that? No, I really don't. Not really. Um, not usually. Question two. Do you feel you have natural gifts such as premonitions or hearing spirits? If so, do you think this is what led you to your path? Yes, I believe I have natural, intuitive, or psychic gifts. I'm, pr I'm in touch with my intuition. You know, I do receive impressions that I have received confirmation on. I occasionally see or sense spirits as well. But I don't feel that those in themselves are what led me to my path. I feel that my journey to where I am now is a bit more complex. There were many factors that shaped and led me to where I am today. And my abilities are only one facet of my experience. Number three, what deity do you work with, if any, and why? I work with a few deities, actually, but I don't like to talk much about that. In fact, there is one deity that I've been working with um, quite a lot in recent years, but through divination, it was revealed to me that I'm best off not advertising who that deity happens to be. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to gloss over that one for the time being. Unless I receive some other indication that the situation changes and you know then you will all be the first to know but I will say generally speaking I don't work with only one power I have worked with many and I do tend to still work with you know a variety of powers um, in the past I worked a lot with Hecate but I feel that she came to eventually release me so that I could continue on my journey you know in, in learning and growing under the guidance of other deities and spirits but even still um, I do consider myself a daughter of Hecate even though I've moved on to the patronage of other powers or to working with other powers have you always worked with the same deity? This is number four. No, clearly not. After the last answer I gave you, clearly not. Question five. Do you use any personal items in your practice, such as blood, urine, tears, etc.? 
Sometimes. As the need arises, I do. Question 6. Do you do past life readings, or have you ever had one done? If you've had one, who were you in a past life? I don't actively do regressions. I have tried self-regression once, years ago, and I received a few images, a few scenes of past lives out of context. I have no clear idea who I was. I only have a few snippets of scenes that came to me. For example, I saw a cradle rocking very slowly. I also had a flash of a woman descending a staircase. She was wearing um, what looked like a an elaborate wig, sort of like when, when in, like the, in the Georgian era. Um, she looked like she was wearing a wig like that. She was descending a staircase. Um, I also saw a man face down washed up on a beach. And then I also received a uh, another one of the scenes I got was of a pale-skinned woman with very red lips having sex with a very dark man. I have no idea. These were not all necessarily, I think, related to each other. These may have been flashes of a few different lives, maybe. Um, but I'm not even certain of that, and I really don't know the the context. I just got flashes. I just got snippets. So I don't know who I was. Um, question seven. What is your favorite magical tool? It's hard to pick a favorite. If I had to choose one actual tool, I'd probably say incense. I love the richness of incense and the power it can have as a psychological trigger. Um, it helps me to move into more a more spiritual or magical headspace and emotional place. Um, I know that in answer to this question, I could have said things like, you know, my mind or my spirit or my will, but I see those more as parts of me than magical tools, although that can be debated. Question 8. What is a song or type of music that gets you in a witchy mood? Um, usually it's more ethereal music, like Enigma, Enya, Lorena McKennon, etc., that kind of gets me in that sort of mood or headspace. But I've also been inspired by um, Florence and the Machine, Bjork, Susie and the Banshees, etc. My musical taste is all over the place. Um, I'm not one of those one-genre people. I'm pretty much like, if it sounds good to me, I like it. If it doesn't, then I don't like it. So I, it, dep it really depends on the mood of the music and the, the sort of, I guess, um, spiritual mood or magical mood that I'm seeking to um, feed and help to cultivate. You know, if I'm, obviously, if I'm um, seeking to sort of uh, raise and direct uplifting energy, I'm probably going to choose more uplifting music. If I am on the warpath, I'm probably going to use some pretty heavy and dark and crazy music. Question 9. What is the most magical place that you've ever been? I would have to say um, when I was a teenager and I was first starting out in my um, exploration of magic and the occult and spirituality and all that kind of stuff, there was a beautiful willow tree that I can't even explain it. I used to just go there and feel this connection. It was it felt alive and it there was just this energy to that tree. I I literally felt like the goddess was in the tree, you know, like the archetypal goddess. There was a goddess I felt in the tree. And I can't even explain to you the feeling that I used to get with that tree. I used to go there all the time. And I have to say, I would probably still be visiting that tree today, even though it's like 40 minutes away from where I live. I would probably still find a way to go there. But for the fact that one day they, I guess the people uh, that own the property, the groundskeepers there, it was like a, in a public place in my hometown, they cut the tree down. 
If I could say there was ever a magical place, ever, that called to me intensely, it was the, the willow tree. What I wouldn't give to have that willow tree back, I cannot explain it to you. It was like nothing I've ever experienced before or since. Question 10. What animal is your familiar, if any? Nixie. My little, my little kitten, Nixie. She's my familiar. Question 11. What in the craft are you best at? Divination, spells, or ritual? I don't do much in the way of formal ritual. I really don't. Um, at least not anymore. I haven't for a long time. But if I had to say what I'm better at, I'd have to say I, I'm probably equally good at spells and divination. Question 12. What in the craft would you say you're weaker at? I think what um, springs most readily to mind is that there are certain methods of divination that are not my forte. For example, I could probably develop my abilities with reading playing cards quite a bit. I, I am yet to really learn or master um, palmistry. I can't say that I'm very good with ogum runes. Also, I, I'm not, I'm not the greatest with runes, but um, there, there are obviously places, you know, in, in my, you know, journey or in my practice that I could improve upon or expand upon or, you know, work at to get better. I think we all have those. But yeah, I would have to say the ones that really readily come to mind are those, you know, certain kinds of divination, certain methods as, as the ones I've, for example, um, listed for you here. Question um, 13. What is your most favorite part of your craft, spell work, spell writing, or divination? I'd have to say it's probably a tie between spell writing and divination. Those I really do enjoy, those two, very much. Question 14. What is the first purchased tool you ever got? I think the first tool I ever purchased were tarot cards. Question 15. What was your first homemade tool for your practice? Honestly, I, again, it's hard for me to remember. I think it might have been the pentacle that I would work with on my altar because I originally I started out as a Wiccan and if I'm not mistaken, it was the pentacle. I went out and I, I found like a really beautiful stone and I, I, you know, used a Sharpie marker and I designed the pentacle on it. Question 16. What are your feelings on raising kids in the craft? I don't have kids, but if I had kids and, and I had to, um, you know, approach this question, first, I, I, I feel that I would not drum it into my kids that because I'm a witch, they would have to be. I, I would want to aim to be sure that they clearly understood that it's okay to not like this stuff. If you don't agree with this, you don't have to do it. I wouldn't push them to, to pursue witchcraft. If they were interested in it, I would, I think, begin them with, you know, learning about it at home. Age appropriately, I think I would pace things. And I would want to be sure that they understood that there are as many ways to practice witchcraft as there are grains of sand in a desert, and that there are as many different kinds of witches as there are grains of sand in the desert. I do feel that um, children should also be exposed to and taught about many different religions. I don't think any one particular path, or even if you're not religious, you know, I think it's still good that children just be exposed to understanding what other religions are, what other people believe, without bias being thrown at them. You know, I think that um, 
it helps to well round a child so that when they grow up they're aware that other people have beliefs that may or may not be their own but at least they have some sort of respectful understanding that hey that's cool you know different strokes for different folks question 17 if you were a goddess or a god who would you be honestly I'd probably be Loki. Question 18. Do you use astrology in your practice? In what ways? I use astrology to a degree. I'm no expert astrologer. I'm not going to pretend that I am. But um, I do use astrology uh, generally. And I use it um, usually to judge times for workings. Or occasionally I will refer to astrology to help in formulating understandings of situations involving people. Sometimes I will see zodiac signs or, you know, or zodiac influences or astrological influences, you know, highlighted in divinations. So, you know, I will, I will use my understandings of, you know, properties or qualities of the zodiac, you know, or, or planetary, um, energies in that way too. Question 19. What, if any ways, could you practice dark magic and still respect the beliefs of Wicca? I could absolutely practice dark magic and still um, respect the ways of Wicca, the beliefs of Wicca and Wiccans. Because honestly, I am not a Wiccan, but I, I respect Wiccans regardless and I respect their beliefs regardless. I may do what I feel Let's say uh, if I deem that I need to do something that's a little dark, I will do what I feel is appropriate for certain situations. I'm not one of those like willy-nilly hexers, but if I deem something is appropriate or that a situation merits such action, of course I will take it. Does that mean that I have a diminished respect for Wiccans or their beliefs? No. Um, I always I have total respect for them, but that, that really has no bearing on my own situation. Um, and also, I would like to say that there is a difference between dark and evil. Something can be absolutely dark, but that does not mean it's necessarily evil. Um, and also, there's there are evil things that are not necessarily dark, believe it or not. And finally, for this segment, question 20. Do you have any witches in your family? Suffice it to say, I will say yes. I'm not going to really go into much detail, though, about that, because this is more about me. This is not about them. And I would like to respect the privacy of others in my family.